cats are knocking at the door. Knock, knock, knocking at the <laughs> cellar door. Hello, friends and fiends. Welcome to Bugs Need Heroes, a podcast where an artist and an entomologist team up to illustrate the inspiring abilities of insects by creating a bug-themed superhero. I'm Amanda. And I'm Kelly. Before we get started creating this bug-inspired hero, what is bugging you, Kelly? Um, no no buggins, I guess. Everything's been cool. No buggins? I, uh, I got to speak at a conference last weekend. Which... Yeah, tell us about the conference! It was fun. It's the uh, New Jersey Mosquito Control Association's conference. And um, a bunch of the local um, mosquito commissions get together here in New Jersey. There were folks from out of state, too, which was cool. And uh, a few universities, professors and students. And I met a lot of a lot of nice people who were doing some pretty neat research, not just on mosquitoes. There were some uh, interesting TikToks, TikToks, huh? So, <laughs> as well. Um, oh no, TikTok is a, that's oh that's Spider Man use TikTok. <laughs> it's a whole that's a whole app. No one wants to touch is TikTok. <laughs> no, no one wants TikTok. I'm, it's followed quickly by like face lime disease. Yes. <laughs> But it was uh, it was nice. Um, one of the, I guess, uh, conference people who put together speakers reached out to me, Dr. Uh, Andrea Ejizi. Hi, Andrea. Thank you. I know she listens to the pod and asked if I would come speak about our Comic-Con talks and also about the podcast and science outreach. So it was cool. It was fun. All right. And I saw your picture of Miss Skeeto. Miss Ke- <laughs> <Ms. Keto. laughs> She's great. It was like the is she is she just for that conference or is she a, a more widely dispersed mascot? Well, I'm pretty sure she's just for that conference. I don't know where they that got is her. So cute. Uh, uh, excellent. A bunch of guys took turns being her, and they they <laughs> seemed to be very into it. It was great. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I I'm gonna have to do some doodling of Miss Keto. She was so funny. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, they don't mind us putting a picture of her like on the Instagram. Or something, oh, they would love she, it. I think they would. They oh, would good. enjoy it. Uh, I wasn't sure my talk, you know, my talk's kind of weird in context for a science, <laughs> for like a professional no, science you're, conference. You're out, but you're out reaching, you're out touching. I I almost said you're out touching the children. <laughs> no, that is no, not no. what I wanted to say. <laughs> you're out reaching to the people who need, like me, yeah. who like bugs, but need to learn more about the bugs. <laughs> and you Bug too. Fools, as it were. You're out there with me. I, the I feel like I have learned about bugs. <laughs> so if anything, that is a, a plus. But uh, yeah, it was great. So thank you. If anyone's listening, thank you to the Mosquito Control Association for having me. Yeah. It was awesome. What, um, what's bugging you, Amanda? How's the new house? Oh, I, I love the house, but I hate moving. I think that's <laughs> what I complained about last time too. But like, it's... Uh, I am not at home today, I should say. Uh, so if I sound weird, I apologize. I am in my mother's home office. You may notice her bookshelves, <laughs> Kelly, in the background. Very professional. Um, but I, I, I am fortunate that I only live 10 minutes away from my parents. So I was able to come over here because my house is not yet ready to host me speaking into a microphone without being able to hear my children in the background. So that should be fixed by next week. <laughs> but you kind of had to pick what you're going to get. A slightly echoey room or the screams of a four-year-old and a one-year-old. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you, you don't sound uh, echoey. You sound okay. Full of rage. So. Okay, good. Because Derek and I did some troubleshooting before you got here to, to try and minimize <laughs> the echoes. But It is preferable to shrieking children. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, cause, Either way. Yeah, they would be like, where's mom? I know I saw her. Or even worse, I can hear her. Where is she? <laughs> Screech! Screech! <laughs> They're just peeping around looking for you. Lately on TikTok, one of the big conversations I've seen on my personal feed, which you know is obviously directed towards me personally. There's a lot of mom TikToks on there. <laughs> but one of the co- topics of conversation has been, why do children walk right past their father to come find mom? For a problem that dad could easily fix. Like, I need you to open my applesauce. Yet your dad could have done that. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm in the shower, you know? So Why is that? Just is there a resolution? Uh, or a... Well, I think the short answer is default parenting is often the mother. And so in a child's mind, 
you go to the default parent. Hmm. I have a problem that my default parent will solve. And if it's mom, I have to go find her regardless of whether they're a secondary parent, I should, which is not a phrase anyone uses. I should be clear. <laughs> like secondary parent sounds a little dismissive, but like their non-default parent is right there and available. It, but that's not how kid minds work. Fascinating. So, Fascinating. Yeah. Little kids. Yeah. Default parent stuff. is its own whole thing. <laughs> Deeply tied into feminism and patriarchy which is not the subject of this podcast no i mean i guess occasionally we we touch on that but not it's not really a bug well, thing. it's not a bug thing that we were it's about. not really a bug thing the ladybugs are not concerned with uh gender expectations as well. <laughs> well, if anything the ladybugs the, the, seem to be in charge yeah they we've had a couple where like i mean the queen bee is not necessarily in charge, no, no. which is like part but, of the whole thing. Is that But all the other female bees are. The males just right. mate and die while the ladies keep Right. We've had a lot of, keep going. and then the male is there. He is also involved. <laughs> like the, the mosquitoes. She's the one who does all the mosquito-y things we associate with mosquitoes. All the bitey. The bitiness. All the bitey bites. Yes. Chomp, chomp. <laughs> He's just... Uh, his beautiful eyebrowed self, his fluffy <laughs> antenna, a quiver with love for her. Oh, oh, what a couple. What a couple they are. Power couple. Power, Power couple. couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, that's what's bothering me is that I'm not at home uh, on a beautiful morning. The, the children are with their non-default non parent. <laughs> I hope they're having a good time. I hope Cody's okay. <laughs> You know. Yeah, they usually spend mornings with Cody because Cody's shift is weird. He he is the closer at the at the restaurant. I don't say want to say restaurant. He's the closer at the kitchen where he works. Mm -hmm. So he's gone in the evenings, which means he's home in the morning. So they usually spend the mornings with him anyway. So it's not that unusual for them. Business as usual, I guess. Yeah, correct. So so today we have. Um... I think a pretty interesting bug to talk about. A, a spooky bug. A spooky bug. Uh, maybe a spooky... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love a spooky bug. Do you, do you want to announce today's, today's bug? So it is... Let me make sure I have the name precisely correct because it, it is a, a long-named friend. Hold on, let me scroll, 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 scroll. This precise name is the Death Head Hawk Moth, which... I know as the moth from the cover of the Hannibal movie <laughs> when I was a kid, Silence of the Lambs, where it's like over her mouth. Mm -hmm. There was a whole genre of horror films at like the blockbuster video, which tells you how old I am. Me too. Where you would, <laughs> where <laughs> you would walk past and there was these like spooky DVD covers. And I remember being very disturbed by them as a seven-year-old and the death head hawk moth was one of the ones where i was like oh why is that moth on her face Ooh. it is creepy it is a creepy although we it also yeah we sorry we, we did i think half decide to do this because derek kept getting ads for squishables the plushie yes that is correct the death head <laughs> hawk moth, which yeah. is our targeted ads since starting the podcast. I don't know if yours have been affected, Kelly, but <laughs> mine have been deeply affected by doing the podcast. You know, because I like Google several images of bugs every weekend. <laughs> my, my... So it's like, she must love bugs. <laughs> my ads for most of my adult life, at least through my through my master's degree and PhD, have been bug, <laughs> bug related. I remember when, when my husband was uh, preparing to propose to me. So he was looking for rings. Aww. He told me in like the least subtle way possible. Let me say, Cody, I love you very much. <laughs> He's not a subtle boy. He's not capable of deceit in any way. <laughs> uh, so his exact words to me were, hey, don't use my computer. And I was like, well, okay, why? Uh, because I'm worried about what the directed ads will show. <laughs> and what he meant was it's going to show him a bunch of rings because he's been Googling rings and I'm going to catch on to that, obviously. The thing is, I, A, have never used his computer when before we were married <laughs> and B, would not have noticed that his ads were all rings because I just wouldn't have. Yeah. So he 
he just like fully tipped me off that he was Googling something weird. And I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, now what's going on? This guy I'm dating tells me not to look at his directed ass. What does this mean? So it's all like the good crash news. bags and lie and shuffle. It, it, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's all like where to hide body in Oregon, you know. Well, I'm, exactly. I'm glad it turned out in the opposite direction, and that it was a yes. Ring. I too am happy that it ended in rings and not murder, <laughs> unlike the Death Head Hawk Moth, which sounds like it does occasionally end in murder, at least in the sense that Hannibal Lecter is involved. Oh, Der- Derek just shared another spooky VH cover, VHS cover of Candyman. It's got a B on it and an eyeball. Uh, uh, uh. I think I kind of remember that cover too. The yeah. one I remember the most is, and I have no idea what movie it was. It's just someone like holding their own mouth oh. and like pulling it. And then there was like a skull in their mouth, um, but like a skull with eyes. Is that dead alive? Which is the worst kind of skull. I, don't, I have no idea because I was a child and I would scurry away as soon as I saw that cover. <laughs> my my dad would... um. We would watch those movies with him and we were far too young to watch those movies. Well, uh, I think we mentioned last week we were talking about Too Scary Didn't Watch, which it seems to be a podcast about horror movies. But if you're a wimp and can't watch horror <laughs> movies. Well, Derek is confirming it was Dead Alive. I was right. It was Dead Alive. I remember Great. my old Perfect. old horror movies. Mm-hmm. Freaked out seven-year-old <laughs> me. <laughs> I was anti this. Skulls with eyeballs. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's never right. It's not good. At least the the death said hawk moth skull doesn't really it doesn't have eyeballs. So that's like their big characteristic, right? Mm-hmm. Is that they've got kind of a scully shape on the back. On their, yep, on their thorax, and that's what makes them kind of a spooky, a spooky bug. Is that they've got this what we recognize as a skull. Obviously, mm-hmm. a, a bug wouldn't recognize it as a skull. <laughs> well, it's also one of those. Huh? What's what's interesting about about the skull shape is that um, some entomologists have hypothesized hypothesized that um, <laughs> it looks like the head of a queen bee, oh. and then if you look at that big abdomen afterwards, it it's sort of the shape of a big gravid or uh, pregnant queen bee. It does kind. Of, now that you say that, I can see it. It has the head, and then its abdomen is kind of stripy as well. Mm-hmm. In this, what a furry little guy, though. So yeah, they're furry. quite fuzzy. But that's a what so, a cool in a way. It is still a head. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, why do you think it would need to look like a bee? Any guesses? Well, we've discussed briefly in the bee episodes that sometimes other things pretend to be bees, so that other things think that they're stingy that would be my only hypothesis okay that that is a an excellent hypothesis um but this this little but incorrect it, for the way you're gearing up <laughs> i was trying to how gentle can i be um no 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 it was it was a very good guess uh but these guys actually raid hives oh okay so they're trying to look like a queen bee it's because they're undercover. They're undercover. As like undercover queen in there. Undercover <laughs> queen. So the the death's head hawk moth. Ha- not only does it have this sort of resemblance of a queen, it emits pheromones that also kind of smell like bees, and it makes this insane clicking noise. It kind of screams, and the screams are very similar to the noises queen bees make. So they're really going out of their way to be so they're really bee. incognito as a queen oh yeah bee. they're just like pay no attention to me I'm just, a, I'm just a bee it's fine so are they going in there to get the honey yeah oh yeah so they have specialized uh, a specialized proboscis which is kind of pointy and sharp and they use it to break the sealed honey caps in their in the honey cells right and then they have the, a, the little okay yeah because remember the honey cells are covered over with wax so this right once they're filled up, mm-hmm. they get the the wax that we then steal and make candles. <laughs> yes, <out>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they puncture that, and they have kind of a wide opening in the proboscis, and they slurp up all that delicious honey, without hopefully without getting stung. Though occasionally they do get stung, but they have some resistance to bee venom. So even if it happens, eh, you know, I had no idea <laughs> when you guys suggested Death Head Hawk Moth. I thought we were just going to talk about like. 
and they're spooky. <laughs> but clearly they've been up to a lot of stuff that I was completely unaware of. I mean, even their like second set of wings, their lower wings are like their top wings are more what I would consider a moth pattern. Mm-hmm. That sort of brown with some some striping and ribbing. But the lower wings are also yellow, which I think really contributes to this. Now that you said that, I can definitely see. Are you seeing more bees? This, this fake bee in the middle of this moth. <laughs> Whereas before, I only ever seemed to see the skull. Yeah. You know? Isn't that neat? What a what a wild moth. I was excited to talk to you about this one because everything I read, it just kept getting weirder and weirder. Especially with the bee mimicry. <laughs> I think now you said that they make a clicking noise. Mm-hmm. I seem to remember something about the clicking noise that they, and I think that's supposed to be like a death omen thing. Uh, where like if you hear the clicking of the moth, of the moth death is coming for you. <laughs> there's lots of interesting folklore around this moth. So um, in the 1800s, they were considered generally just bad bad luck if you saw one. Okay, well it's got a skull on it. The entomologist Moses Harris wrote like a whole thing about them being connected to evil spirits. Of course. Of course. Back when science and like evil spirits was the same (laughs) study. (laughs) Uh, Around that time too in France, they said if the scales from their wings fell in your eyes, you'd go blind. It was wild. Dang. Yeah. I mean, butterflies and moths in general have a lot of sort of uh, spiritual links uh, throughout the centuries. Butterflies in particular, you hear a lot about like, and then there was a butterfly and you knew that their soul had yeah, yeah. fluttered away or whatever. Yeah, that, A lot of good luck stuff about butterflies too. But the um, the kind of cool thing, so there's three species of the death's head hawk moth and um, they're all named after Greek. Um, so two of them, are, I could pronounce this yesterday and now I can't pronounce it. I have to cut out my <laughs> bad pronunciations. Acheronidia atropos and also Lachesis. They're both named for the Greek fates. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. And then the other one, uh, the species name is Styx after the river Styx. The river Styx. From the Greek underworld. You, of course, were a big, uh, like we've said before, every kid goes through certain stages and you're either like a mythos kid or a whatever kid or a wolf kid. Yesterday, me and my friends were discussing whether you were a horse girl or a wolf girl. <laughs> I was a wolf girl. I was a wolf girl too. My best excellent, friend was excellent. a horse girl. <laughs> so you're right. Every For every wolf girl, there is a corresponding horse girl. <laughs> There's also a cat girl. I don't know if you knew any cat girls. I but didn't. they're the kind of girls who like up until like the sixth grade. Derek is calling you out saying this is revisionist history and that you were a horse girl. What? Did you, I did you just lie to me? I was not a horse girl. <laughs> Derek, I once spent my entire saved allowance so we're talking like 35 dollars worth of saved allowance on every single wolf thing they had at the zoo (laughs) so it was like postcards stickers you know whatever i mean 35 dollars is a lot when you're seven oh yeah so I spent a, a huge chunk of change on wolf stuff every sketchbook i had was full of wolf drawings uh I was a big wolf kid. I did like horses. Don't get me wrong. I did like horses, but I mostly liked horses because our grandmother owned horses. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. I got to interact with horses because she had a beautiful, mostly white horse named a lady who was the nicest horse on the planet. If you were under like five foot, (laughs) she was like a rescued. So she was like a rescued horse. My grandmother rescued her from one of those like rent and rides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where anyone can come and rent a horse and ride them. And unfortunately, it was patroned by a lot of men who had imbibed, we'll say. (laughs) And so she grew to hate men, particularly men who had imbibed. So, like, the smell of beer would set her off. Wow. But she loved children. And so us grandkids would go to grandma's house and ride this horse. And you could just sit on the horse bareback. And she just gently walk around she sounds wonderful she was wonderful but if you were a man and you got on her she would crush your leg against the fence <laughs> until you got off uh, honestly Derek agrees she my was hero. a nice horse <laughs> she sounds awesome 
She was a very, very good horse. Well, and we could tell some horror stories about my grandmother <laughs> involving this horse's uh, demise, but we won't for this podcast because it's a long story. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to believe you that you were a wolf girl, even though there seems I to be some evidence girl. to the contrary. But that's okay. I'm going to get out the sketchbooks and you're going to see hundreds <laughs> of drawings of wolves. wolves. Just, just wolves, wolves, wolves. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I was definitely wolves. a mythology kid. I loved. Yeah, me too. I loved mythology. I still love mythology. Packing up, now. I found a lot of mythos books from when I was, you know, 16 or whatever. <laughs> and uh, one of the big, one of the big comics right now in the comic world of web comics is a comic called Lore Olympus. I don't know oh, if you're I have, aware I haven't of seen that it at all. No. It went off like gangbusters. The very, like, like it dropped, and people were like. This is it. And and uh, it's like getting like an animated series now. Oh, neat. It's like a whole thing. Like you can buy shirts for it in the Hot Topic. But it's like the flagship comic for Webtoons. I would recommend it to you. It's pretty good. It's a Hades Persephone oh, retelling. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, it It's definitely well researched. I believe the author's name is uh, Rachel Smith. Uh, spelt with a Y, but her username is used band aid, which is quite the name. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But it, she's clearly well researched in the mythos of because there's little subtle things that like, oh, okay, this is a reference to blah blah blah, like in the background of shots and stuff. Oh, that's fun. Uh, I will say that it does have a a sexual assault as one of the subplot storylines. But if you're a mythos kid, you knew that that was yeah, yeah, inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> gonna happen in mythology i'm i'm reading volume three of um neil gaiman's norse mythology uh graphic novel my dad loved those i love he loved the those. graphic novels are great the artwork oh, is yeah. beautiful and yeah perfect there's been a big rise of like graphic novel versions of books particularly like in kids books hmm. uh when i was working in a school in portland the kids were all had to read instead of reading a wrinkle in time, they were reading the graphic novel version of a wrinkle in time. Oh, I didn't know there was a graphic novel version of a wrinkle. In time. Yeah. Apparently there's a graphic novel versions of several of those literary classics for kids that sounds fun. as a way to like, try and get them to read these older books. So I thought it was interesting. Yeah. A wrinkle in time in particular, I can see why a graphic novel would be better. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's some dense sentence structure <laughs> in wrinkle in time. <laughs> Like at 10, I was like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, I haven't read that book in, yeah, probably since, since I was 10. T- yeah, ish, ten. <laughs> somewhere around there. But the, uh, the, so the Death's Head Hawk Moth is connected to this kind of really cool, sort of spooky Greek mythology. In Count Dracula, it's what Dracula fed Renfield, which is so strange. Oh, really? Yeah. There's all like kinds a, of weird I stuff. I haven't read Dracula forever either. Is it like one moth or like a bowl of moths like a cereal i don't know, I, don't know. Uh, I think you could eat a pupa cereal i think that'd ugh, be pretty easy I would not, not dissimilar from from sugar puffs it's gonna it's not gonna taste like sugar puffs that's for sure <laughs> it's not gonna taste like sugar. sugar puffs also makes your pee smell mm. so don't eat sugar puffs if you are concerned about your 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 wee wees <laughs> smelling like sugar puffs. Well, what's what's kind of neat too is that this whole spookiness around this moth in Europe, at least, didn't occur until the the eighteen hundreds because mm-hmm. it just wasn't around in Europe. It wasn't as prevalent until oh. until Europeans started farming potatoes. Oh, it's a potato lover bug. Yeah, which. Always gives it extra uh, points with me because I love potatoes. a moth after my own heart. <laughs> <The French laughs> my moth. husband will sometimes say, "I thought I liked potatoes, and then I met a man <laughs> because I love potatoes." <laughs> oh yeah, it's so neat. There's so much weird history around this this one group of animals. Well, because potatoes, it's interesting because potatoes were considered poisonous for a long time. Yeah, they they like um, nightshade. So yeah, yeah, because they, they're a nightshade thing, which is I think tomatoes also like fall under to maybe I'm mistaking that, but basically like like we can't eat that. It's it's a poisonous plant. <laughs> what are you well, talking like, about? Like a lot of our other bug friends, when it's not raiding honeybee hives, they're they're nectar t- drinking nectar from plants, and so they'd visit the potato flowers and kind of do their thing. They're nocturnal, so they're they're around at night. Do you know the story? Of the forbidden potatoes. I don't 
I'm concerned. I'm already concerned. No, okay. I don't think I do. It's just a little tiny little <laughs> history anecdote about the history of potatoes. Yes, yeah, tell me. So I'm trying to, I'm pretty sure it was in France. So France wants to bring over these potatoes. And they say these potatoes are cheap to grow. You can grow a ton of them. Please start eating potatoes, people of France. And the people of France are like, no, they're poisonous. We're not going to eat them. So King, I think it's King Louis the Sixteenth. I'd have to double check, depending on like where. It's a lot of Louis, <laughs> mm-hmm. all like kind of in a row. <laughs> but I think it's sixteen in like the mid to late seventeen hundreds. So King Louis the Fifteenth, Sixteenth, whichever Louis it is, a Louis. He wants people to eat potatoes, and so uh, the idea is that they plant a bunch of potatoes. And then they put armed guards around the potatoes so that the potatoes seem really valuable. <laughs> so then people Reverse start psychology. coming and st- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so people start coming and stealing the potatoes because why would you put an armed guard around something that wasn't valuable? Yeah. I got to eat the king's new favorite food, potatoes. So they steal the potatoes and it takes off like gangbusters. People are like, potatoes are great we should be eating potatoes and that's how you convince people to eat potatoes is you put an armed guard next to them (laughs) i mean it it was their loss for so long because potatoes are delicious truly truly what's not to like about (laughs) potatoes if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life it'd be potatoes so many different kinds well i mean you you like potatoes we like potatoes the death's head hawk moth likes potatoes we're all so okay well so the potatoes are from the Americas, right? I think yes. Central America. Uh, so is there death head hawk moth in the Central America? Or no, was it just when they brought just over when potatoes? They brought them over, they... Okay. Mm-hmm. So then the moth was like, sweet. You guys have brought my favorite thing. <laughs> moth is like, excellent. Can excellent. Louis, excellent. Louis knew what he was doing. Potato. Yeah. There's like, yeah, there's a ton of different types of nightshades. So they were probably hanging out on European nightshades and we brought potatoes okay. over and it was just like, Hooray! Extra. They were like, oh, a new, a new, a new flavor. <laughs> yeah, extra food. So, so far they eat poisonous plants and stolen honey. Yes. They're, they're, <laughs> These guys are deep. Kind of amazing. Um, and they're big. Uh, so I was going to say, because if their middle section is the size of a queen bee, how big are they? Because they still have a whole framing device around so this they have a, fake bee. a wingspan of about 13 centimeters so in in freedom units that's five inches that's a big boy yeah, that's a very big boy um and their body that's like the size of my tiny toddler hand their body lengths are about six centimeters or like two and a half inches okay okay i've got my hands i'm, I'm trying to measure my little hands here it's a it's a so like biggie so they're like postcard sized yeah, I think that's a pretty good comparison is postcard size. I don't maybe, I don't have one slightly less. pinned. I have a bunch of pinned bugs, but I don't have any. It, I feel like this moth is one of the ones I see pinned a lot. Like yeah. if you've got a collection of bugs, I gotta get you've one. got this bug. I'm going gotta, gotta to get a pinned version of all the bugs we've done on the show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what of your art collection begins. <laughs> You're just going to start suggesting episodes on like what you want to acquire Ex- next for your pin wall. Tell my husband it's for the show. I, yes, it's it's for the show, babe. I need but, them. <laughs> but Kelly, it's a six hundred dollar pinned bug. It's for the show. I need it. It's a business expense. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna write it off on the taxes. <laughs> it's fine. I know that Disneyland has one displayed, or they had one displayed last time I was there. Uh, oh, that's outside cool. the Jungle Cruise ride, which now it sounds like it would not be anywhere near where you might cruise a jungle. <laughs> So, oh well, they're, they're found throughout uh, um, Asia and um, parts of Europe. We don't, like I said, we don't have any here. Uh, they're in Northern Africa, down to maybe I think Sub-Saharan Africa. So okay, so you might they're around. You might, you might. cruise one because the Jungle Cruise is is it's got elephants and hippos, so it's in Africa somewhere. Yeah, but if I'm honest, most of its detailing is more closely related to like the amazon so there definitely shouldn't be hippos yeah. there. <laughs> well we have we have other hawk moth species here in north america you've probably seen them um they, they kind of remind me i lost my train of thought of what they remind me of but we have hawk moths here in north in north america and they have the same little 
scully skull no, in the back no they don't have the skulls <gasps> that's why i don't know yeah they remind me of hummingbirds thanks derek my brain my brain just <laughs> turned off because they they like hover around the around plants they're really neat we'll have to cover some native species another time so is i've heard that hovering is like a big deal as far as flight goes i don't know if you know that or whether this is just something i've made up but <laughs> i don't mean if, i don't mean if, if you know that and like a, it's something i know and you don't know i just mean i don't know if you know more about it and i'm just making stuff up but i, I prefer to you to think that i don't know anything about it that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was poor phrasing. On my part. I just know that hovering is supposed to be a big deal, but maybe you, a more learned person about things that fly, uh, it is know a otherwise. greater energy expenditure to hover. So you're really oh, burning okay. Some, I see burning some cows when you're doing you're treading that. water. What's you're not getting anywhere? What's more uh, interesting about hovering is birds that do it. Um, insects yeah. kind of do it a lot. But um, birds are a lot lighter. It's a lot easier to yeah. It's a little less hover, less weight. But um, I think there's a uh, only a few species of bird that are capable of hovering, and that's kind of a big deal in that. It's like that it's, yeah, it's supposed to be like a Harris hawk, and a and the hummingbird. Uh, there's like, like a tobacco, is it tobacco something bird? They can actually hover like hummingbirds. Really, oh, really interesting. interesting. Yeah, we, we we gotta do an episode on birds. <laughs> Well, birds. <laughs> I, the biggest bug of all. Birds. <laughs> I do have some experience with birds, so Well, you have to pick one that hunts bugs so that we can make him a That's billion. like a lot of them. That's most of them. Well, then you you really <laughs> opened up the gates here as far as what's acceptable on the cast. I wish we could do a Shrike episode because if, oh, if we, uh, the, yeah. the natural oh, yeah. Hannibal jump is from Hannibal Death and Hawk Moth straight to the Shrike, because he because those of you who don't know about Hannibal. Uh, he he goes by the sh- the Shrike. He's like the something Shrike in the, uh, is it Brian Fuller version on the television? I don't know if that's accurate to the to books the book. at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's Shrike-ish in that one. But Do, do you want to tell the audience what Shrikes do? So Shrike is a, a, a birdie boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that it's pairs of, of Shrikes do this. And they find... Uh, animals, snakes, other birds, <laughs> big bugs, and they will impale them upon uh, anything they can find to impale on. It sounds like mostly um, in their trees mm-hmm. or in the Americas along fences, because we have a lot of fences in places where shrikes are, and they will impale their prey onto these uh, nails or uh, particularly like sharp sticks. Or, yeah. Thorns. Yeah, yeah. So they have like a horrible display of their hunting <laughs> prowess. And I think it's there so they can immediately feed their young once their f- young hatches. But I'm not positive on that. They're an yeah, interesting the, bird. A little gruesome. A gruesome yeah, bird. Kind of like how owls will just line the nest with dead lemmings. The shrike <laughs> is like prepared. The fridge is full before the kids ever even show up. It's good parenting. It's just solid parenting. Just like our friend the cicada killer. You gotta solidly parent sometimes. Gotta make sure the babies are fed. Well, so I mean, that's like the number one goal of being a parent is to make <laughs> sure that they're fed. <laughs> oh, dead animals are easier to take apart when they are staked, said Derek. Mm-hmm. And the shrikes are small, which gives them leverage. There is a whole episode. Yeah, they don't have to hold on to it with their feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. It'd be easier if you hung it up and then stripped it, which I guess we also do in butchery. A lot of, a lot of butchery talk this episode <laughs> with the hawk moth. Okay, so, so between Cicada Killer and uh, Death's Head Hawk Moth, we're, we're on a grim trajectory for the podcast. Yeah, mom was complaining last night at family dinner. She was like, oh, so many gruesome episodes in a row. You know, the, the cordyceps. The cicada killer. We need to do some lighthearted episodes. And unfortunately, she's not going to get her wish <laughs> this week. Mother's Day. Tell tell mom to tune in Mother's on Mother's Day. Day. <laughs> okay, we'll do something nice, nice and ungruesome for mm-hmm. Mother's Day. <laughs> so these these guys like other catap- like other butterflies and moths. They have four stages: egg, larvae. The larval stage we also call caterpillar, and um, pupa, which is chrysalis, and then the adult. And uh, like a lot of our friends, they spend kind of a lot of time as, as babies. Yeah, it seems like the moth in particular doesn't seem to spend much time as a grown-up. 
quote unquote. No, no. An adult, an adult lot moth only lives for about six weeks. So they have a pretty short adult lifespan. But as pupa, they, they overwinter as pupae. So that's a few months that they're hanging out in their little chrysalis underground, waiting for the warmth to happen. You know, it, and this is a very similar similar thing we've covered with other bugs. Oh, but what what is kind of neat, so the caterpillar stage, they have these little horns on their butts. And uh, we don't really know what they're there for. They just have, it must be some sort of nefarious thing. <laughs> it's Who definitely has a nefarious. For, like innocent reasons. <laughs> so I went down like a rabbit hole trying to figure out what is the purpose of this little horn? Because through each molting stage, there's four stages, that little horn changes shape and size. So it doesn't stay the same. There have been hypotheses that the the little, in the smallest stage, the horn helps with stability. When they're bigger, that it's to help deter predators. Uh, some, an entomologist had said in one discussion that, oh, maybe maybe the horn is for, for stabbiness. And then someone else replied, you couldn't get stabbed on that if you've tried. He's like, I've tried, and it's very squishy. So it's a very squishy horn. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like a pool noodle horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, not effective for stabbiness, no. even though it's clearly shaped for stabbiness. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't seem like it would be a display. Yeah. Because they're not adults. They're not adults, right? It could just be a, a deterrent for a predator. Like maybe just make you think yeah. without the the necessary resources to make a real horn. I'll just make you think. Clearly, mimicry is big on this. Oh yeah, check out um, mine. check out some of the images Derek shared in Discord. Oh okay, so you Excellent. can see the little Click horns. Oh oh, it's a big horn. Yeah, it's big and floppy. I was I was picturing yeah, like a little I don't know, like a little not quite tail, but this is like a full. More like a dog's tail and less like a... Yeah, you know, yeah, like it's a, kind of curled little just... at one stage. Weird, right? How weird? And they don't know what it's for. Now, I, hmm. I, one guy said he spent four hours doing a deep dive when he couldn't find any solid information on exactly what this horn was for. Someone else hypothesized that it might be... Uh, it might emit pheromones. I'm a little iffy on that one, but... Just really like, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, just, I don't see much pheromone work in non-adult, non-breeding animals. Mm. So it's kind it's of not ready yet. Well, sometimes pheromones can can be a like a deterrent too. Oh yeah, so, don't eat me. I smell like yeah. I, I don't smell good or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I really thought that was that was fascinating. Or like a yeah, pheromones can be a summon too. Um, but no one's really sure. And uh, if I get my own lab, I would love to try to figure that out. What is this floppy horn for? Although I will say that usually when you're trying to figure out what a structure is for uh, in the lab, you remove it and then see what happens. Oh, <laughs> So it wouldn't be fun for the caterpillars. No, he's like, my tail. They've taken my tail. <laughs> my little butt. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I needed that. So the caterpillars are kind of weird and that. Oh, and, and they will bite you. If you disturb the caterpillars, they're bitey, which is funny, I think. (laughs) This, like, floppy, squishy thing trying to bite you makes me, yeah. (laughs) It's it's not very threatening. I'm going to predict your death, he says. (laughs) I'm going to tell you. I'm going to make you go blind once I have wings. (laughs) But that's, like, yeah, that's their whole, basically their whole life life cycle. I'm thinking about superpowers. I see you've got your, your pad out. Yeah, sorry, I've, I've quickly tried to put it in an under sketch. Yeah. Um, for her. So, one, my list of superpowers I have for our Death's Head Hawk Moth hero. Hero or villain? I'm not sure what direction you'd want to go in. Maybe a villain. I think we could go ambiguous. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, she's out here hustling. Part of me wants to go because of the, like, if you see it, it's going to you're going to die thing. Mm. Or if you hear it, I guess is more. That's what I knew about it. was that if you hear it, if you, if you hear the squeak, (laughs) the scritch, scritch, scritch of a moth, uh, that you will soon perish. And then given that you had like these, the fates name after it, part of me wants to make it like a 
like a prophetess. Oh, neat. Kind of go on that, like the fate thing. Oh, Derek, uh, producer Derek makes a good point that she's a pollinator, but she will also steal honey from our beloved bee team. Oh, yes, that's true. Oh, so she could be an adversary to the bee team Mm -hmm. directly. Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe she's the Zordon and she's collected them specifically (laughs) to steal from them. She's psych. I was the villain all along. Okay, I mean, uh, the question is, do we put her in a toga or not? I guess. Um, I wouldn't do a full toga because we want. A, I think we want like a. Hmm. We want She's like pretty a fuzzy. I feel like we should vibe. represent the fuzziness yeah. in some way. But there could be some neat little Greek accents. We'll give her a meander. Yeah. Which is an art history word for that, like uh, that squiggle thing. Yeah, yeah, the little squiggle thing. It's called a meander. So she's got. She's got the squeak going on. Um, she's got erratic movement. So with with this these three species of moth, if you threaten them, they will start hopping around and shrugging their wings up and down as a deterrent. As like a don't mess with me dance? Uh, yeah, she does a don't mess with me dance, which is pretty neat. She's got thievery powers and that stabby, stabby proboscis. So she should have some kind of pointy weapon, I think. Is is a scythe too on the nose? <laughs> I, I don't know why I really glommed onto the spooky elements here. You could, yeah, we should shouldn't. see how a scythe looks. Uh, and I'm also sitting beneath my my because I'm in my mom's house under my brother's old taekwondo stick. I don't know what they're <laughs> called. It's like it's just pointy on both ends. I don't know, and a little bit thicker in the middle. I'd have to look. Bow staff doesn't seem correct, but maybe it is a bow staff. <laughs> uh, of course, they have flight because, you know. And um, oh, what's kind of neat is they have a pretty long migration. Uh, they probably cover around 4,000 kilometers, which is a big migration for a moth. But not only, they're not just following the wind. They actually adjust um, for head and crosswinds. So they're not getting blown around. They're like kind of doing this migration with purpose. I don't know how we'd make that a superpower. I guess we would just do flight in that, in that context. Well, the more we, yeah, the more we talk about it. So she, I'm saying she, cause I, I understand. So she pretends to be the queen mm-hmm. and she has direction. So I know I made the joke about it being Zordon earlier, but I think <laughs> we, the villain is starts as the the queen of the bees, and then in like the season two <laughs> series the season finale, you find out that she was behind it all along. She hasn't been the queen. It's like um but, like American Gods, yeah. where you find out Mister World is Loki at the end, and he and Odin have just right, been yes. playing games the whole time. They've just been messing with you. I've been on a Neil Gaiman kick recently. Well, what's not to like? Yeah. Neil Gaiman is great. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm also giving her some uh, Victorian styling. Mm, yeah. I know, isn't Because 18th century fashion is a lot of stealing from classicism. Uh, the, the classic Greek statuary and stuff had just been unearthed. That like marble white sort of look was very very popular at the time so much so that they were scrubbing statuary clean by the way which is this is activated by trap card which is my secret love for what is called polychrome which is just kind of the blanket term for any time a a statue was painted in antiquity Hmm. and because being painted that wasn't that wasn't cool you know like there's you don't want to imagine rome with all these brightly painted statuary if you're a 18th century but they were right 19th century person but they were so in the 19th century they would unearth these beautiful greek statuary that which whatever you're imagining to be greek statuary you're probably pretty close (laughs) but then they would find flakes of of paint like still in the armpits or the elbows or in the particularly curly hairs and they would scrub that off so there's a lot of yeah, so there's a lot of painting or a lot of statuary that we know was painted, but we no longer know how when we should have known how. Yeah. If, if they were unearthed today, we would know. So there's some statuary that we can scan and you can see some basic 
forms of what the painting might have looked like. But the, but our idea of this white, astute, uh, uh, very, very stoic Rome and Greek, which are two different civilizations, but <laughs> the styling is very similar yeah. in pop culture. Uh, like, that doesn't exist. That was never a thing. Every statue was painted. There was no, like, their robes were not white. They wore colored robes the same way we wear colored clothing. It People are people are people. They like what they <laughs> like, and typically they like colors. Uh, okay, I gotta get her some, some sort of wing situation on here. Mm-hmm. Can I give her, I just feel like for moths, I give her a lot of cloaks. A cloak cloak capes cloak seem to be like the go for a moth. Uh, Derek recommended skulls. Oh, you yeah. You gotta get okay, a skull on her. there somewhere. We gotta get the skull. Can I, house, I need to make it subtle so that her obvious about face isn't <laughs> isn't a, is a surprise still. Maybe I'll give her like that mystique in the nineties. Remember Mystique had that like skull. Oh yeah. <laughs> skull yeah. belt. Let's see if I can work that in somehow. Make the eyes here on her corset. And we'll do yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Made her head too big, because I always make her head too big. <laughs> She'll need some kind, maybe like a big sword. If you're not going to do a scythe, are you doing a scythe? Well, I think this. I think the scythe is too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there probably won't be another chance for a Grim Reaper esque bug. Okay, all right, I'll do the scythe. <laughs> You've talked to me into it. I know you want to. I know, I know you kind of want lo- to. I love a good scythe. Come on, what's not to like? She's kind of got these. Thick boy legs that I'm going to try and replicate in this scythe design. Yeah, all that. Um, they have really thick, kind of dense seti or fur, and it's also to help deter bee stings. So she's got it. She's real plush. Okay, then I'll add some more fluffy elements on her, like opera gloves. Here, we'll give her some fluffiness at the top of that. Is she going to look like the B team? As far as like. Uh, Zentai suitness, or just in color schemeness? All. Uh, I'm trying to make her like. Also, a lot of times in Japanese, in particular, but uh, hero dumb, there'll be like the goddess character that they all have to like go get their missions from. I'm trying to do that sort of thing. Oh, that's fun. Which is why her inevitable betrayal will be a particularly harsh. <laughs> It turns out she's been farming them for honey this whole time. I'm not sure at all what to what to expect with this. Okay, hair wise, goddesses always have like that long, straight hair. I'm gonna see if I can try to make it moth wing shaped as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give her the the prophetess blind eyes. They always have like the eyes with no pupils. <laughs> that is a trope. Yeah. Well, if she's making people go blind, she is also blind. But not really. It's all a ruse. It's all a ruse. She's a tricky, tricky priestess. Okay. Is there any other markings I should make sure I get on her other than um, the skull? I mean, she's just got some striping. Oh, the um, there are markings on the abdomen that very much look like a rib cage. Did, oh, did you did you oh, notice that yeah. on the abdomen? Yeah. They got the stripey. Because I saw them, you know, once you said the bee thing, they look like bee stripes. Let me see if I can incorporate those at all. Got a lot of cleanup work to do on this one. The sketching was (laughs) fast and furious. I was playing fast and furious with the kids yesterday at the Ikea. Okay, so Kelly, Mm -hmm. confirm or deny. There are two types of people. People who love the Ikea and people who hate the Ikea. Uh, Confirm. Are you a lover? I love the Ikea. I haven't been in a long time. We went... When I first, when we moved from our like studio apartment to a two bedroom, we went to Ikea because we needed like some more furniture and uh, it's great. I love the Swedish meatballs. I love the lingonberry jam. I love the whole experience. I like the guided that's, that's... walk. It's got, it's a little arrows. <laughs> it tells you exactly how to go. It's great. It's efficient. How about you? I think the love of meatballs is the, <laughs> the Scandinavian in you. It probably is. The food of your people, your ancestors. <laughs> Who doesn't love a Swedish meatball? They're delicious. Honestly, uh, psychopaths. They're so good. <laughs> and they have so many kinds. At our Ikea, they have like three different kinds of of meatball. To, uh, 
you know, to accommodate all, all walks of life. <laughs> the Swedes are very accommodating folk with their meatballs. They are. They really are. Unless they want, unless you want to be fed by them <laughs> in someone else's house at dinner time. I haven't been to an Ikea since probably a year or two before the pandemic. So it's been a long time. Well, may I recommend going back? I like it because you can walk past all the little houses and you can pretend like, oh, this is what my life would look like if I got my life together. <laughs> I too could have like a beautiful Your home new house only. could be Ikea furnished. Yeah. Uh, it it could be Ikea furnished. <laughs> that is certainly true. <laughs> but like the styling is so good. Whoever's doing this styling mm. for Ikea, great work. That you really make interior decorating seem like a, a skill when you walk through the Ikea. You're like, dang, people really know how to put together a room. Yeah, I do not. I just I, I throw some stuff not. in a room and hope it works. Like the most I can do is like paint the walls <laughs> so that they match the furniture. That's like the height of my powers. We rent, so we can't even really paint. I mean, we can paint, but then we'd have to fix it before we leave. And I'm not doing that. Yeah, fair. How's she looking? I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited for the she artwork. She's a little bit like a moth mermaid at the moment <laughs> because I don't have her feet visible. <laughs> but that's okay. I, I was trying to get a, like a floating effect, and I'm not sure I've pulled it off. Is the does the hawk moth show up in Hannibal at all, or is it just on the cover? Because oh. it's mostly about the screaming of the lamps. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if the moth is actually in the movie. I think it was. I think it was. I've also heard, this is one of those like goes around the internet every now and then as like movie things that you missed, which always seem to swing wildly between, yes, that was incredibly obvious. This is how filmmaking works. <laughs> and uh, like, you're, that's a stretch, you guys. Like, this is just how society works, you know? <laughs> so, but I've heard, and I cannot speak to, that when he says, I had the was it a mailman with the fava beans and a nice Chianti <laughs> that like fava beans and Chianti being alcohol and like protein that like those things are meant to be on like the forbidden things you're not allowed to eat while you're on certain kinds of psychiatric medications. And so he's like subtly telling Clarice that he's off his medication because he's been drinking. But that seems like a big that stretch. Is, Right. Yeah. The rebuttal of that, of course, being that fava beans and a nice Chianti are just both really great food words to say. <laughs> yeah. Fava beans. Chianti. He, he really like, those delivers are great. the line. Yeah, and he certainly <laughs> delivers the line. It's funny to watch like the Mads Mickelson version of Hannibal and then go back to the Anthony Hopkins Hannibal because the Anthony Hopkins Hannibal definitely has like the same level of like quiet dignity, mm. but he's more willing to do things like like suck his tongue at you, which like the Mads Mickelson would never Hannibal would, would never, no. would never. I had read on, I don't remember where I read it. I mean, it was online somewhere that uh, Martha Stewart was dating Anthony Hopkins. And then after silence of the lambs came out, she couldn't, she, she couldn't cause she couldn't not honestly, see him as Hannibal. Yeah. Same. And I think it ruined their relationship. <laughs> That's funny. That's something they don't talk about with like actor relationships. Like, oh yeah, I saw you do some pretty horrible things. <laughs> I know it wasn't you, but, but it was you. Yeah. You know? Okay, I'm going to share her to you as is, and then we can decide what we need to add to her. Sure. Okay, let me pop the sketch version of her in here, and we can decide what we need. To I, I wish you guys could see. I'm looking through my window to the across the balcony into the other room and my cats are having a wrestling match in front of the door <laughs> oh it's so cute i love when they wrestle as long as no one gets hurt what's well, oh. like the what is it single kitten syndrome where like they don't learn that biting is bad yeah finn finn is very b big he's like 13 and a half pounds and he's on top of 10 pound darcy <laughs> <laughs> fitzwilliam escape fitzwilliam <laughs> oh oh she's cool looking She's very cool looking. Look at that. Amanda, well done. So I don't, I don't know what else she needs to look like a hawk moth. Though. No, she, <laughs> and not she obviously looks like a, a turnabout villain. No, she looks like a hawk moth. That's cool. I can't wait to see it all colored in. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get, get so uh, let's go over powers again. Flight, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
That is our blanket statement. Unless we specifically tell you a bug is not flighted, <laughs> which is true in the comics too. Like Wonder Woman can fly, Superman can fly, Green Lantern can fly, everyone can the fly. The Flash can, can, everyone can fly. You know why? Because it's easy to animate. <laughs> because Superman's original powers were that he jumped really high. Oh, but they changed it to flight so that they had to so they could stop animating him jumping over buildings. Fun fact. Oh. So that's why people fly. But yeah, heroes flying blanket power. Like even Hawkman and Hawk Woman have wings and they never beat them. They just always fly around with their <laughs> static magical wings. belts. Yeah. yeah, they have static wings and then it's like part of their canon that they wear belts that make them fly. And I'm like, then why do you have wings? That makes no sense. For a fancy costume. They don't use the wings. They use their nth metal belts. To, and I'm like, what? Can you what? can you describe the the costume? Oh yeah, Rose. so I've given her long ethereal hair because she's a, a that that goddess thing often has like the hair that's longer than any human could reasonably <laughs> <Yeah>. manage. <laughs> like I'm not brushing this seven times a day. No thanks. The split ends would be a nightmare on hair that long. Um, a nightmare. Only a goddess could maintain this without uh uh w- w- without split ends sorry i got distracted by derek typing <laughs> so i think we've talked about her connection to the b team i don't know how what arrangement this is gonna happen so i think we're casting her as the zordon to the b team okay she's the one who has given them their powers explained to them that they're the b team and she's the one who grants them they're like you have to get to planet hawk moth or whatever it is, you know. I don't know. I don't know if the the B team is terrestrial based or if they're in an international scale or interplanetary scale. What, whatever. But she's the one who's like, a mountain is about to fall down onto a village. You have to get go over B-team. there. Right. Go B team. Go. And she's the one who like explains to them their lore. Like you are the princess of the planet. You're the queen of the moon, <laughs> Sailor Moon. And uh. And she, so she's their, their, their goddess that grants them their powers. But then it turns out sneakily that she, as a hawk moth, has been stealing or using or sapping their power in some way. Oh, I like it. it, it because she's coming to steal their honey. You're, you're <laughs> going to have to write a it. whole comic book about the B team and hawk moth. Uh, we've accidentally created a whole yes, war we- around the B team. <laughs> Like most other people, we've been like, yeah, I bet they're, they do this, haha. But the B team's the first one. Like, I think because there's enough characters, yeah. that you get a little bit of tidbit each time. So, if you go, I don't know how familiar you are with Sailor Moon. I assume mm-hmm. a passing familiarity yeah. because you were a girl in the nineties. Sailor Jupiter was Jupiter. my was my first cosplay. Oh I remember perfect. <laughs> so, as you know, Queen Beryl, who is the first villain of Sailor Moon, new Sailor Moon. Before she gets reincarnated, she was also in love with the same prince that ends up with Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. And so she, when they all get reincarnated, she's the big bad. I think we need to confirm that she's got some sort of connection to whatever their original power was. And that she was involved in that somehow and not on the right side of that <laughs> somehow. And But now that the girls are back in whatever way they are, now that she's reassembled the team... She can pretend that she was part of their good, their the good side. I like it. You don't want to get straight like too it. close to Sailor Moon. <laughs> I love a reincarnation story. <laughs> so we've given her a scythe because of her a death hawk moth death association. Her hair is flowing into like two kind of wing formation. I've given her a fluffy rough stuff (laughs) like a drop shoulder fur thing uh i think i did this same basic silhouette shape on the chocolate midge oh similar sort of like yeah well it's a very sexy shape when you have like the the fur shot because a lot of times i'll see like the fur as like a scarf on moth characters i was again Mm. i try not to look at any art before i do this because i don't want to be influenced by it i really like the body shape of the dress and the cloth detail i think yeah, so I tried to kind of incorporate both the, the toga fabric yeah. flow that we talked about with Mythos 
And then also because we mentioned that they suddenly became <laughs> kind of boomed around uh, the 19th century, 1800s. I tried to give her sort of a, a late 19th century silhouette because it mm-hmm. kind of naturally came in with the, the sleeve shape I'd done. So I've given her kind of a corseted waist to a, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a bustle on the other side of that <laughs> skirt and then tried to keep some flowing fabric coming down from that. And of course, opera gloves with fur on top, because who doesn't love an opera glove with fur on top? She looks fantastic. She looks very goddessy. Well, very goddessy. Well, that was my yeah. goal was to make her look. And I, we've, it tried to keep the skull shape a little bit more subtle on her corset. I'm I'm not going to say that the B teams are clearly idiots if they don't realize she was the villain all along. But it's a little bit. You know, of goddess wise. comes and tells you something. You believe them. Yep. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see it in color. It's very cool. Very very cool. Yeah. Hopefully, I can keep the the color scheme related to the B team without making her look too much like a bee well, I, <laughs> but I would, to be fair the hawks moth has a lot of yellow and black on it yeah but i would try to keep keep the feel to the hawk moth you know you don't want to like yeah. be it up too much yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly egg exactly <laughs> well i had no idea that the hawk moth was up to such shenanigans random should i give her a random horn that does nothing <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Just one really long finger, like she's an AI <laughs> produced image. Oh, Derek is recommending a bugle to assemble the team. Oh, that's an idea. That's a useful horn, though. <laughs> yeah, it's useful. Her horn is nothing. It does nothing. I guess in the end, it wasn't a correct horn because she gathered them for nefarious <laughs> purposes. Personal gain. <laughs> How many uh, legs would you give the Death's Head Hawk Moth after learning about well, it? Given that. I thought it was just an aesthetic bug. I thought we were just picking it because it looks so cool. It's a cool looking bug and a big bug, which a very big, despite bug. having seen them in person several times because they're in, you know, I imagine that coming at you, like you're camping <laughs> and you're like around your fire and you're like, hee hee, I love s'mores. And then just two inch moth to the face. <laughs> it's coming to, to make you blind with its, its wings. <laughs> So I would give it, I, I don't, I feel like it's a six level bug. Yeah, you're giving I feel it a like full it's six. really cool. Ooh. I mean, it doesn't do a lot as far as like, you know, like a praying mantis has its cool arms. You know, that's awesome, you know, or whatever. But given that I thought it was just an aesthetic bug and it turns out it does all these other things. It, it steals honey and it, it has a fake horn. <laughs> <laughs> And it like pretends to be a queen and gives off queen smells so that you don't notice. And of course, it is a pollinator. And we are a pollinator mm-hmm. monster podcast. That it eats like triple P. A, a plant that we consider poisonous. I don't know. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Pretty bad. I think it's yeah. a six bug. I'm gonna. I think it's. Cool. I'm gonna give it a six too. They're very neat. Yes, they're very very I neat. I love when our our scores match. It <laughs> validates my score. <laughs> yeah, they're very cool. Uh, I had a good time learning about them and um, and their their folklore was is very interesting. I love I love a folklore. So awesome. Would you get a pillow in the shape of a moth <laughs> as Derek's directed ads <laughs> would like you to? Is it like a squishable brand? Is it a squishable is supposed to be like Yeah, it's the squishable the brand. brand. Um, but it's oh, the Death's man. Head Hawk Moth. It's really cute, though. It's I'm very, looking at very her picture of right now. It's adorable. You'd never know that she's sneaking into your hives and drinking your honey up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think she's cool. I think she's really cool. And we've accidentally created more lore for the B team. <laughs> <laughs> we love the maybe B I can, team. Maybe I can make her nefariously, like, ominously hovering over the B team in our cover image but i think i might keep that just just the bees yeah i love six I characters love is a lot of characters <laughs> yeah i can't so wait I, to see the finished like, movie poster for the b team yeah so that hopefully we'll be able to release that i'd like to make it some sort of like downloadable so that anyone who wants maybe i'll just put it the original file really really big on the reddit that people can oh can find it there yeah or we can put it on the save on the image. website i guess <laughs> Oh, yeah, probably the website, the website, not the Reddit. So, you know. Well, this was great. This is fun, Amanda, as always. Yeah, I, 
I enjoyed learning about this one. I didn't know anything about it. I'm going to have to go and see if I have any similar moths here in the Pacific Northwest. Probably not. You, you've got um, hawk moths over there. Just not this kind. I've got regular hawk yeah. moths. But are they deadheaded? <laughs> They're not. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. Surely they are not deadheads. Well, if you're a pollinator positive person, the way we are a pollinator positive podcast, maybe you could pollinate our positive reviews <laughs> by by flinging yourself over to iTunes. Uh, Podbean is our host. Any of the places you listen to a podcast, if you could leave us a positive review, that would be great. Uh, YouTube is completely full. If you want to go over there and subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, of course, you can always find us at BugsyHeroes.com and on the subreddit under the same name and the Instagram that Kelly so kindly runs for us with uh, little buggy pictures and, of course, the finished art. Uh, anything else from you, Kelly? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay, then may you not hear any death head moss screeching anytime soon. <laughs> Bye! Bugs Need Heroes is created by Derek Conrad and Kelly Zimmerman. Hosted by Amanda Allen Nide and Kelly Zimmerman. Bugs Need Heroes is produced and edited by Derek Conrad. Our music is Ladybug Castle by Roll Music. All character art by Amanda Allen Nide. Got a bug question? Email us at bugsneedheroes at gmail.com. Check us out on BugsNeedHeroes.com for the visual companion to our episodes with the artwork of the bug-related heroes. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and subreddit under the Bugs Need Heroes name. Thanks for coming by. Oh, that's the one! That's Isn't that freaky? That's a freaky cover!